And and we're gonna we're gonna keep an eye on the Cowboys offense and we're gonna keep getting getting in with what it is they're doing because I, I really love it. I, I love to see my team with this creative and fun offense. And I mean I watch Cowboys tape anyway, so why not do a little bit to try to uh, try to replicate it? And this this isn't a carbon copy of the Cowboys offense, of course. It's more um it's more loosely based on some of the personnel and formation that you'll see the Cowboys use. Alright guys, so we're going to start the Cowboys offense out of this empty look. If you look, this is the first snap the Cowboys took in-game all year. They have a halfback at the top of the screen, followed by two tight ends with two wide receivers closer to the bottom of the screen. Now, the reason we want to start with this formation is because it gives us some identity. There are a lot of ace formations in Madden, but not a lot of empty and not a lot that we can see the Cowboys explicitly use themselves, right? So we do see that... Uh, again, we got the, the halfback, the two tight ends, and the two receivers in an empty in an empty look. So in Madden, that can easily be recreated using empty ace out of either the Patriots playbook or the Dolphins. Now, I initially started with the Patriots playbook, but I now use the Dolphins because I prefer some of the other formations, particularly some of the heavy formations that we will get into in other videos and a little bit here. So whenever I start a new offense. That, I'm, that I intend to run, I I typically do my early lab in in-game. So I come in here with a, a blank canvas, if you will, and I look at how the spacer works, I look at how the, the routes work, the route combinations, and, and what users or what my opponents are typically going to do when they face it. So I probably played five or six games before I actually took this into the lab and started adjusting to how I feel it's working in-game. So of course, initially, the, the main thing I want to do is I'm moving Tony Pollard around a lot. Tony Pollard is the speed. He 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 is my, my lightning on the field. Because I have two tight ends and the Cowboys tight ends aren't fast. The Cowboys receivers aren't um, relatively fast. And the great receivers, so of course we are going to find ways to mix them in as well as the tight ends. But you absolutely need to make sure you're, you're taking advantage of the one dude on the field who can be considered mad and fast. So you see these deep digs. These deep digs are going to be very useful because they get... They beat man, and they're going to get over, as far as zone coverage, they'll get over linebackers and underneath the, the safeties, which is something you'll have to see the Cowboys do take advantage of in real life. Um, but, yeah, so one of the things Callum Moore says is that we want to aggressively take what the defense gives us. So every time we snap the ball, we're, we're looking to see what's available to us. See, if this side of the field gets vacated, we're not worrying about if Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb are on the other side of the field. Blake Jarwin's wide open for an easy catch. And if that's what's their old game, that's what's their old game. A lot of times when we see two high safeties, we're actually going to run it. Right now, I'm laughing the pass, but you'll see the Cowboys run a lot against that, that coverage shout. And they'll pass quite often against um, uh, a solo, solo um, safety. So here we go now. Again, we're bringing Pollard over, and you see what's happening to the side of the field where Pollard came from? If you see that, you want to typically make sure you got something going back over there, but this time we did have Pollard right up the middle of the field. Now, we do also have these outside releases, which is great when you have um, a route tack, you know, somebody with those, those um, route running thresholds. So we're going to beat press. This time is a press cover three, but we're still going to beat it. You're pressing a good receiver, you're going to get beat off the line. But you want to make sure you have other routes because there are DBs that are going to give you a hard time. It's all about matchups, of course. But you always want to make sure you have options. You're never just looking for one uh, one receiver on any given play. Here again, this time I think we put Jaron on the out route. I mean, why not? It's there. But of course, we do have a drag. We have a streak. We have an out route. And we, we have other things just in case. That is an open. And you'll see. So now this guy, he was pressing a lot, but sometimes he was playing over the top. So I would try the outside release sometimes. I think right here I actually do the outside release and get him. Could be wrong. And then other times I will put Coop on a post because you know the post is gonna beat that bail man. But um so we were playing a little bit of cat and mouse, which was fun. He also did some run commit, and you'll see some highlights of that a little bit later as well. Because when I, when I start to audible down, the uh, morphing and not I'm running, but we'll get into that. So bringing CD Lamb to the line of scrimmage or Tony Pollard, they can stay on wide receiver routes and be at the line of scrimmage, which is great. So they could be on splash, 
uh, slants and whips but they can also block so if you need to you can put them on block a delay route and then get an additional block which is great the tight ends just motion all the way across um neither of the receivers cross the line of scrimmage when you motion them so we'll do a setup video where I'll, I'll go over a lot of the things I'm doing. Some of the things you see here, you won't even see me doing for real. Here we see a, a mixed match with CeeDee Lamb because we know how he's been using and he's been trying to use everything down low because we've been running a lot of drags at him. So we're going to shoot CeeDee Lamb over his head and before he can react, we're already gone for the touchdown. This double post setup is one that I really love. I'm just putting Coop on that apprentice post and then motioning uh, CD in. And of course, we have these routes underneath that we can hit. And you want to possession catch if you can. So now, before this game, I actually ran into the lab. And this was when I said, okay, I'm going to start throwing this corner route against a single high safety. Um, I also discovered this touchdown to Tony Pollard against cover two. So that absolutely rose cover two. And again, that's the fastest dude we got on the field. So we want to take advantage of that, of course. You see, we're bringing that, that route back over again, but we know pre-snap that it's not cover two, so we're giving ourselves another option. Just want to see if that fade is going to do anything. And more than anything, it's going to distract the user. It's going to draw a few um, AI defenders out of the way, so the post does have room to operate, so that's great. Love bringing these drags underneath. It's We're really stretching the field, if you notice, because we're hitting a lot of things. We're hitting a lot of things underneath. We're hitting a lot of things over top. We're hitting the sidelines. And then we're coming right down in the middle of the field when it's there as well. And this is just the beginning. We're doing a lot of other things out of this out of this offense. I think you guys are really going to like this one. So if we see the single high safety again, we're going to hit that corner. We'll also throw deep outs against the single high safety. Here we can see there isn't a safety. But because his user is in that area, I would rather jump that off to Lamb and do a little shake than even try to throw it to, to Coop. I, I would rather throw it to the dude who his user isn't even between us. Right there, I didn't like how the corner looked. I probably could have low it and hit it, but we're better off taking the, the, the pass that we know is there and keeping it moving, right? We, we don't want to turn the ball over. See where his user is? And the man covering Pollard. Nobody was going to catch Pollard there, so we, we throw that out. That's quick and easy. And we sped up some of these plays, by the way, just so that we can... Um, Keep the video from being 40 minutes long it's, it's already 25 minutes or something like that anyway here we get coop the, the, the deep out route of course you see the single high safety again and lamb has a linebacker on him so we know we can win that we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of it see so you'll see some dudes starting to have some some, some heavier defensive sets out there because you're order building down and running which you haven't seen yet but you'll, you'll see that and but we audible down, I mean, we're just absolutely abusing these nickel and dime defenses. So here we go with motion and pilot in again. And bringing in pilot really gets gets people's attention because if you've played Madden long enough, you know pilot is fast. You know he's the one that's going to give you trouble in terms of speed if anyone else is his offense. So sometimes I'm motioning him in. I'm not even looking his way. He may be on a block. And that's the benefit of being able to block him as well. well that's great. Um, again, we get that deep out on the sidelines. And you guys already know I love the deep out. It's only clouds that are really going to stop you from throwing it if you want to throw it. Here you see he's controlling the deep third, I think is what happened. So the middle of the field was actually open for that, that post to come over the top. So that was a cover three, believe it or not. So the this slant from Tony and the out route from Dalton Shelves, or from a tight end in general, you are going to see me do that again in a few moments, where I have poop on the there you go the the outside release fade. Those are two great routes, simple routes, but great routes to mix in when Coop is on that um, that route because if he doesn't get a release. You got man beating routes going opposite directions. You just got to see which one the use is chasing, which one he is in. So I'll, I'll do that again. And I've actually done it a few times. It's very effective. So here you see I motioned the tight end all the way over to the other side of the field. Man beating routes. Everywhere you look. Take the one that gets you seven points. 
got a single high safety so we're gonna go ahead and set up our little scissors look over here with CD and Mari got our drag coming underneath the pilot if we need it and I think we do nope we're able to get the corner there that's beautiful got our fade out here again but I believe this is a man and pilot's able to beat that over the top absolutely you got a possession catch that when you're in on the sidelines or you They'll, they'll put one foot out of bounds to make it an incomplete pass. I've done it enough times to know. Don't don't let it happen to you. But if you got the space and the time, then by all means you can. Um, here we go. Here's the slant and the out route again. But if you got the space and the time, you can catch it and run for a touchdown as I did earlier. And there we see. I mean, Dalton Schultz was was open for an easy pass. So you you just you take the easy one. You keep the chains moving. This offense is one that is extremely easy to run as long as you're not forcing anything and as long as you're able to take your time, make your reads, know when you need to set up extra blocking and know when you don't because if you're not sending heat, I'm sending out 05 every time. There's there's no reason to handicap myself if you're dropping back into coverage. And once they see how quickly you can get the ball out and they see how you're able to audible down and do some of the other things that we're doing, you don't get you don't get too many guys sending heat at you after the first or second draft. So here you see we're just setting up these different concepts that, that we know work, right? Clearing out zones and we're using our corners. And then just always having something underneath for a check down. See Jarwin on that out route again, right? See it. But we're gonna always take advantage of that space if it's there. The single high safety. The single high safety doesn't stand a chance against these um these spread locks. It, it, there's just too much going on. To be honest, I could probably just uh, we're setting up a bench over here to the side. But to be honest, I could probably run a whole bunch of um verticals and just pick and choose who I want to hit when, when you come with the single high, right? Maybe have one row coming underneath. There we go. We're gonna hit him again in the, in the corner. And that may be the next thing I do in the lab. Maybe I'll maybe I'll mix verticals in. Because I am using that outside release. Um from the go wide play. So I can always just run vertical concepts from that. Yeah, see there you go, right? I mean it's it's verticals anyway, right? And this time we're setting up the, the crosses underneath and a nice post over top to Man of Mari Cooper. Again, now this guy, I, I believe it was this guy, he refused to come out of single high. So we were absolutely killing him with the out routes, we were killing him with the corner routes. Um, he even went to a cover three show too, if, if I have the right guy. I believe it was the Browns uh, user that did that. So we're just gonna we're just gonna give him all the smoke until he comes out of that. We can give him all the smoke. See, he's still doing it, we're gonna keep hitting it. Corner again. Driving all the way up the field. Hitting the same route. See Coop on that, that out route? Pollard's blocking this time. Coop on the out route. So there's no need to force anything fancy. You know, he got too hard. Is this the time where he did a show? Oh, I tell you what. Look at Jarring. Look at Jarring. We're going to take that anytime it's there. And if you got a tight end with nimble feet, maybe you catch that and run up the field. Maybe you score that. Stiff arm somebody. Good job, Tony. One thing, Tony is shifty too, so I, I enjoy catching the ball and even got us a little wiggle. This time we're changing the receiver who's going on the out route, but that side of the field is going to clear just the same, right? Ball is coming in. I don't think I'm going back to that part of the field this time. I think I'm going to CD, but I could be wrong. No, actually, yeah, we keep it underneath. And we're going to take a hit right here. No, this isn't it. You'll see. I notice when I'm watching this film, I need to do a better job getting down with Tony. I take some hits with Tony. I found a one, but I was out of bounds. But I take some unnecessary hits. But here you see. Hey, Dak might have broke that ankle, but you seen it in game. Y'all seen it. He's still running a little bit. He's obviously not Lamar Jackson out here, but he'll take off and run it. Now, if I know his man coverage, this was actually a design quarterback run. I know his man coverage, but I'm going to send routes. That are going to move all the defenders out of the way and just give it half a second and you just walk into the end zone. You see? So 
I don't use QB draws and all those things, but I do run the ball with my quarterback in other situations. This one here now, I actually, believe it or not, I thought I was going to have the slant or the drag for the completion. I didn't like the way either one of them looked. So this time, we held our breath because I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to get that first down. Now, when we audible down, we're going to be using a lot of the ace wing formations, right? You see the Cowboys here with the two tight ends on the end of the line of scrimmage and the wide receivers on the opposite side. Um, we're going to be using probably three different formations, I want to say, that have this ace look. You see here again. Now, this time, this you may notice, this is actually wing stack, which is in the Cowboys playbook, but not in the Dolphins playbook. So you won't actually see me using that, although I do love it. But the primary formation I'm going to be using this look in is going to be pistol wing slot and that's because they have a great zone run and they have a great jet sweep pass to cd lamb which is something you will see the cowboys doing as well they do jet passes with cd they do some of noah brown we've seen one with um i don't know if you guys remember the one tony pollard against tampa bay where he actually faked the pitch that was pretty cool but um so if i come out in wing slot then i'm gonna keep uh ezekiel Elliott in the backfield but more often than not, I'm coming out in that empty look because I've already now impressed upon you how hard it is to stop that pass game. So now I audible down and I just got to look and say, hey, is it the jet sweep? Is it a run? Is it a play action pass? Depending on what I see from the defensive front. So right here, you see, I, I was in the jet sweep, but I got three guys over there just waiting. So we switch to the run, find our hole, and we make it happen for the touchdown. So we're going to show a lot of pistol wing slot right now. Um, I will show you some of the other things I'm ordering down into, but I want to I want to focus on this right now because these two plays I am using a whole lot. I'm using a whole lot, and they just make the scheme so much more difficult to to stop <laughs> when you're darting people out on the sidelines in the middle of the field, hitting them with these drags and all these things, and then now they got to defend this jet sweep, which is very effective because we have the two tight ends blocking over there, and of course. If you're not, if you're not, um, if you don't have the right personnel in the box, then we'll just run it down your throat, right? So, and this isn't a concept that I've created. This isn't anything new. I mean, people were using the audible down. Here we go. Whoop, stop and go. People were using that audible down in other formations, of course. I'm just showing you how we're doing it in the Cowboys formation and how it makes, I'm sorry, in, in the Cowboys offense using the Miami Dolphins ebook and, and how it makes sense. And to me, this empty ace and, and pistol wing slot, they, they are perfect together. Absolutely perfect together. Because the box is either going to be heavy, like this, for the jet sweep, or it's going to be light, and it'll be easy to, to run. I mean, it, it's something a kindergartner could look at and, and figure out, right? But now even here, on the one yard line, I'm not concerned about how heavy the box is because at the end of the day, I should be able to pick up a yard with two tight ends on the line of scrimmage, right? You're going to have to run commit and, and send a house to stop me. And I'm still going to come back. Actually, I'll probably plug Zeke in there um, and come back and do it again. So here you go again. You see that jet sweep is doing work. So I played 11 games with this formation so far, by the way. Um, at 10 and 1, I lost the first game. And... Um, I've actually won every game since. That's that's not bad. Um, I don't think I'm going to win every game I play, of course. So I'll, I'll definitely lose some, especially moving forward because I'm going to be uh, labbing more things now, right? So a lot of the things you see me doing right now, I won't be doing as much um, for another few days because when I'm labbing, I really want to test new concepts and test new things. So that's going to mean a lot of failing. That's going to mean a lot of turning the ball over. <laughs> and... Um, Usually some else because usually when I'm labbing something I probably split the first six to eight games You know, so I, I was fortunate to only have lost one now. You see we're in single back uh, Single back a slot. So of course, I mean we're gonna go ahead and dive this So now we're gonna take a peek at like I said single back a slot and some of the other things that I'm using I like single back deuce single back deuce isn't a home run hitter um I mean, every now and again, you'll break one. But single back deuce is what I'm using when I want to chew the clock a little bit. Um, I know I'm going to pick up three to five yards. Uh, typically, pick up three to five yards. And um, I just allow the clock to run. That's if I'm not, obviously, in, in one of the heavier formations. So here you go again. We see him, we make a couple guys miss. 
and it's clean for 12 yards. So now here, I told you we see this guy again. So he was run committed when he started to see me audible down, which was smart. So this time we were ready for him. He hit the run commit. We were actually in gun deuce close. And well, you see the result, right? So now here we go. He didn't run commit this time. So we just stayed with our look. He did bring guys down into the box. But at the end of the day, you're not going to stop a dive with that defensive front. Now we're audibling down to a single back. And we're just going to take this run with the man Tony. That looks good. At the goal line, we go single back deuce. Again, this is a good one to punch it in. We know we're going to be able to punch it in. Single back deuce. And we're motioning CDO for an additional blocker. And then sometimes just for the additional motion because we're going to pick up that one yard with or without the motion. Now, the Cowboys do a lot of this heavy stuff. Two tight ends, two, two running backs in the backfield. And, and this... They'll still do some play action out of this, like they do the other formations as well. But a lot of times they're going to show their hand. They say, hey, we're running heavy, just so you know. Right? And now here you'll see I actually have an offensive lineman in that fullback. I don't do it for every snap, but I did it for some. For the real Cowboy fans who know that we've actually been putting Connor McGovern in that fullback. Just a few snaps a game. Usually goal line type of stuff, right? Um, So again, this was our friend that was um, doing a lot of run committing. So I figured if I'm going for two points, it's best I actually uh, pass it against him. So he was doing a good job at least selling out against the run. Because sometimes you got to sell out against uh, to go ahead and bring it home. But we're using strong H wing and weak wing. Um, and this is this is the primary reason I can't use the Patriots. Because the Patriots don't have these wing looks. And I thought it was very important to have these because the Cowboys do use them in their offense. And I'll be developing these a little bit more. I'll definitely be developing the 11 personnel uh, once I polish up every, everything we're doing here. Um, and, and we're gonna we're gonna keep an eye on the Cowboys' offense, and we're gonna keep getting getting in with what it is they're doing because I I really love it. I, I love to see my team with this creative and fun offense. And I mean, I watch Cowboys tape anyway, so why not do a little bit to try to. Uh, try to replicate it and this this isn't a carbon copy of, of the Cowboys offense of course it's, it's more um it's more loosely based on some of the personnel and formation that you'll see the Cowboys use so here you see we're gonna audible into wing and we're gonna hammer it now when I'm in these heavy formations these two wing formations Zeke is my running back. This is Zeke's time to shine. This is where he gets in and he does his work. Just tiring teams out, making them wish they called in sick, right? And then, of course, we'll still sneak in a pass to keep him honest. I think we're going to hit him with another play action here. And you'll see the Cowboys do a lot of this play action stuff. And we roll out. We look for a tight end. Nothing's there. We'll go ahead. We'll take our first down. Again, you'll see, you'll see Dak and company doing it all the time. We got an interception that landed us at our two-yard line, so we just go ahead and hit him with the heavy run. No need to pretend we're going to pass it. This pass, I got away with one there. I got away with one there. That, that should have been intercepted or at least broken up, so we were lucky not to not to turn that ball over. Uh, we, we're going to get back on the ground and push this ball down his throat now. See, so we're up 21-17. So this is one of those situations you're not going to see me in that empty set right now. There's no reason. We're chewing this clock and we really just need a field goal. But we will absolutely take the touchdown to put it away and make sure that the game is over. Now we're back in week and we're going to do another play action rollout. This is the play where I take a hit. I mean, Tony, Tony should be calling me, telling me to behave. I shouldn't have gotten a hit like that. I won't do it again, Tony. But guys, thank you very much for tuning in to this one. This one's been fun for me. I'm excited about this offense moving forward. I'll try to get another one out soon. Till then, give them hell. Keep it rocking. Y'all already know. Appreciate you.